As video games have become more and more mainstream, we've been seeing them get more and more simplified and almost more and more easy as well as time has gone and gone on. It has to appeal to these larger audience, and yes, there are cases to where this isn't necessarily 100% true, and we'll talk about those later, but there is a question that I want to answer today. Michael here with Design View, and our question is, do easy modes and assist modes actually harm not only the game's creative vision, but the gamer themselves? So let's go ahead and talk what is an easy mode and assist mode. So basically, what I'm talking about when I talk about an easy mode is, for one, the kind of standard, easy, medium, hard, normal, whatever you want to call it. Some developers got creative and ended up being like, this is hellbent mode, the mode that's going to kick your butt. And then there's super hellbent mode, which is even harder and yada, 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 whatever. Anyways, modes that basically add more enemies or add more unique enemies, make it more difficult, add more platforming challenges, yada, yada, make your ammo limited and shooters and things. That's the sort of thing that ends up going into those modes. And it's basically meant for the more hardcore players to end up playing. However, one of the more modernized modes of this sort of system is basically the assist mode, where we've actually seen in a lot of different types of games. Let's say, for example, in a driving mode game, it's basically they would have it so that it like auto turns you if you end up getting too far off the side of the track. Or fighting games have had these features for a really long time to where they have basically auto combos or simplified combos, as you could say, to where it's like a single button to end up doing supers. I know SNK versus Capcom, I can't remember which one it was, it was on the GameCube, actually had a mode option when you were selecting your character to where you could end up having it so it'll do your super combo using the, I believe it was the right trigger or whatever. And I can't remember. It's been a really long time since I played that game. But basically, I had it so that you can end up doing the super combo without actually having to pushing any of the buttons, which was actually a really fun mode when you end up playing with two people that didn't actually know how to do this because then they can end up doing the super modes. We'll talk about that in a minute. But basically, these assist modes are made so that people with accessibility problems or maybe are not so skilled at the game can end up performing more kind of advanced maneuvers and things like that. Maybe things like an auto aim assist and things like that. We've actually seen that in games for a long time as well. And it's always been kind of a controversial thing because one of the most kind of praised feelings you could get from a gamer is the fact of the challenge, the sort of feeling of success and overcoming something that couldn't normally be overcome before. That sense of achievement is something that we always thrive for. Where am I on the screen? Oh, there I am. <laughs> I got lost for a second. That sense of achievement is something that us gamers end up normally end up going for. And there are a lot of games that are kind of strung away from this and been more of the sort of experience oriented games, which you know, I'll end up talking about a little bit later. But for these games that are more about challenges, they've had these easy modes and these sort of kind of weird sort of assist modes as well. More maybe, for example, like an invincibility if you end up dying on a level too many times. I've seen that in a lot of platformers to where maybe they have a skip option. I actually saw one indie platformer have that option. It's like, hey, you're uh, struggling with this. You won't get the rewards. You can end up cheating. And so you won't be able to get all in the unlockables. But hey, you could end up doing this. It was Slime Sand, by the way. It has this old cheat mode thing to where if you can't actually finish a level, you can just have it so it skips levels for you. But you won't be able to get on all the unlockables unless you go back and beat them, which is actually kind of a fairly interesting interesting idea. But a lot of gamers have been resistant to this, or at least these kind of vocal minority, I would say. I don't think most people are resistant to it. I think it is one of those things to where there is this sort of, I guess, elitist sort of community that is going to be sort of against this. And I am not going to agree with them. However, I am going to side with them because here's where the question comes into play. Does easy mode actually harm the gamer? Now, I was talking about this feeling of achievement, and this is the main point that I'm going to end up dragging on through this video. I have no idea how to complete this puzzle. Whoops. <laughs> Do I have to go the other way? I might have to go the other way. I might be just going for gold right now. I'm going to go the other way. Now, the sense of achievement when you end up figuring something out is actually quite kind of exhilarating. Let's worry, for example, I do have younger sisters. And so one of my younger sisters, let's say she was playing Sonic one day and she's like, oh, I can't do this thing. Can you do it for me? And I'm like, no, you're the one playing the game. I'm not playing the game. If I wanted to play the game, I'd already be playing the game. You play the game. Guess what she did? She sat there and pouted for a good few seconds. Got a little bit upset. That's fine. Perfectly fine. But sat there long enough and she's like, I really want to see what's after this. And so she ended up doing it. When she actually tried, she succeeded. You know that feeling that she got? That's what a lot of gamers these days don't end up, end up feeling. And it's this feeling of success and being able to be like, oh, I did it on my own. And that's something that nobody else can really give you. You can't go to somebody and be like, oh, well, beat this level for me. And they beat the level for you. And you're like, cool. Or you can't go into a mode and be like, oh, well, I just want to skip that level. You never get that sense of achievement. And sure, you can end up beating a game using these assist modes and everything like that. But it does end up kind of removing a lot of elements from games. And I feel like it makes it more and more difficult to enjoy what gamers have been enjoying or understand what gamers have been enjoying for years there's a lot of people that would be playing things like let's say call of duty for example they'd be like oh well call of duty is the most purchased you know shooter in the world and everything like that so this is what gamers are wanting and everything like that and 
The reality is that most people that want a complex shooter, they do not go to Call of Duty. In fact, they avoid it with the like it's a plague. They avoid it like it's a black rat back in the 1600s. I'm going to give my history wrong on that one. Shouldn't have even tried to make that one. But regardless, they don't go for that. They go for the more complex sort of games. And so what I actually think that ends up being the case is that this is the sort of main point when it ends up coming to gamers is that I feel like it removes some of that element to the game and it removes a lot of that sort of pleasure that could end up being gained from it. Now, of course, not everyone is going to be able to go into that sort of case and some people do have a disability, like maybe let's say they're only one handed. So having something like, let's say an eraser to where it auto accelerates and breaks for you would actually make it so the game is even possible to play because maybe the amount of buttons on one side of the controller or maybe you don't have a custom controller you know, maybe you can't actually use all of the buttons that you need to to actually drive the vehicle in that game. And so that's one of those sort of things that maybe you can make in the argument that, hey, it has a place. And maybe you're somebody who doesn't want to have a lot of difficulty and maybe you don't really care for that success feeling and everything like that. That's perfectly fine. And I'm not going to be against it. I think that having an easy mode is a good thing in games that can support it. Or these assist modes are a good thing to have if the game can support it. But here's the other thing. Does it actually harm the creative vision of the game as well? Now, here's one kind of element to a lot of these sort of games that I'm going to be mostly talking about, such as the game in the background, N++. Now, N++ doesn't have difficulty modes because it wouldn't make any sense for it to, because there is nothing to make more difficult. I mean, you could do things like, let's change the speed of rockets or something like that, because you saw earlier, there was actually rockets on the screen. And you could do something like that in your easy mode. But the thing is, Levels are literally designed for them to have that amount of speed. And so if you ended up adjusting that speed, it would actually end up breaking the way certain levels are designed. Such, for example, there may be a level that has a tunnel and you have to travel through the tunnel in a certain amount of time in order to catch this sort of thing that is flying across the screen. There's, there's a lot of complex things you can do in this game, but regardless, it ends up requiring a very precise timing. And therefore, if you had an easy mode that would change that timing, it would actually break the level and completely destroy the point of it. Now, obviously, not all games are going to be like this. You can end up making the argument that, like, let's say JRPGs, for example, it's like, oh, well, having this boss have 10,000 health doesn't actually improve the game at all. And one of my favorite examples of a game that was able to do something like an assist mode without actually making the game too easy was Final Fantasy 13. Now, I know a lot of people don't like that game, but there's actually a lot of cool design elements that they ended up throwing into that game. That game has an auto battle system to where basically the game will automatically have your character's call out commands and so they will end up doing them so for example like attack attack so instead of like spamming the button being like oh i want to end up doing the attack which they do have um systems in place to where you can end up having like let's say pushing a button for example and end up you know re everything you did in the last move and stuff like that i should do a video just on that game and why i love it but regardless that's for another video but it ends up having these sort of elements not only for the more people that want to have more control but also for the people that could end up having oops they could end up having these sort of systems where maybe they don't want to sit there through a battle they're just going to completely annihilate however here is the interesting point and this is what i'm going to get to and how developers can end up introducing these assist modes without actually compromising their creative vision because a lot of games kind of do let's say like dark souls for example if it was an easier game it would end up sort of removing a lot of the elements of the sort of dark and despair. You're supposed to die a lot. That is the entire point of it. It is supposed to be dark and dreary. You don't die. You just end up getting hurt a lot because that's the way the world kind of works. You kind of respawn at a bonfire and you're supposed to learn from those mistakes and you're supposed to develop your kind of character. And yes, they could make it so that maybe bosses had less health or something like that. Or maybe as you died, maybe they had an assist or it'd be like, oh, by the way, here's a hint on how to do it. And that's things that could improve Dark Souls. That said, in Final Fantasy XIII, this auto battle system isn't actually the core gameplay loop. So in Dark Souls, you know, making it easier to kind of do these sort of boss fights, like let's say it removed mechanics or something like that, that would be a terrible way to go about it because it would kind of remove the feeling and the theme of a certain boss. For example, there's a boss that removes the floor below you because it is kind of destroying the platform it's living on and it's literally a tree that is dying. So like that, people who play Dark Souls know exactly which boss I'm talking about. Removing that element kind of removes the sort of storytelling element to that game and therefore the creative vision. That said, in Final Fantasy XIII, they had a paragraphing system. And basically this paradigm system was actually what sort of class role each character was playing. And so the game main gameplay loop was actually switching between these different modes. And all the boss fights were literally impossible without paradigm shifting. 
Therefore, if you just sat there on auto battle, you would never actually be able to succeed. However, if you were a person who couldn't end up pushing all the buttons fast enough, let's say you're not somebody who could navigate those menus, you aren't very precise on it and to be like, oh, well, they want to use attack, attack, and then a heal skill. You don't have to go through and hit attack, attack, a heal. The AI will be like, oh, hey, you need to attack, attack, a heal while you are in this mode. But when it comes down to it, it's like, oh, well, we need a tank and we need a healer real quick. And then we need to switch over to this Ravager mode that basically makes it so we can build up combos and end up defeating the boss. It ends up going into this element to where it's like you're still technically playing the main gameplay loop and you are still kind of experiencing the main sort of what they wanted you to experience. You are still kind of strategizing around that but it is removing the aspects of skill that would be required not the skill as in you know the thought process and what they actually wanted you to focus on and it you know ends up being one of these cases to where they don't necessarily remove the element of sort of what they wanted to portray inside that boss fight for example there might be a boss that is all about kind of building up a combo meter and so if you just say on auto battle you're not going to build up that combo meter. You need to switch your class and you need to switch up your kind of gameplay moves. And this is one of the most interesting ways you can end up doing these sort of assist modes. For example, in driving games, let's say you have an auto accelerate, for example, that would end up having this mode. You are still turning. That said, though, it ends up kind of compromising the feel of that driving aspect because it's like, oh, hey. But at the same time, you could just be a person who just holds down the go button the entire time. And then that would end up being a very non-enjoyable experience. But I don't feel like having it automatically turn for you is going to necessarily ruin the kind of creative experience of what they wanted you to experience while playing the game. That said, in a simulator game, it's kind of cheap. Let's say in like Forza or something like that. I think it's kind of lame because it's like, hey, you're like not actually controlling the cars. That feels kind of strange. But hey, some people enjoy the game that way. Now, what do most games end up doing with these assists? Now, we've actually seen a lot of bad implementations of these assists, but one of the most interesting ways that I've also seen this kind of made into a good way or made in a good way is the fact of difficulty modes kind of mixing with the assist modes. So one thing that I actually saw in the sort of reviews that I checked out for Nier Andromeda is the fact that it actually has difficulty modes. However, it unlocks certain modes or certain sort of aspects of the assists behind the game mode and so let's say for example you're playing the um easy mode you'll get an auto target skill or you'll get a sort of self-heal skill or something like that and so i haven't played the game sorry if i'm wrong but regardless it ends up having these sort of assists and that is only available on the easier modes there was other sort of platformers and action games i used to play back in the day to where they would lock down gates and things like that i remember when i was playing um kid Icarus, which is a nintendo game surprisingly um, it's actually really, really great by the way, but it actually has gates that actually have access to kind of new parts of the level, more difficult parts that have bigger rewards and everything like that, and they sort of lock it behind difficulties. JRPGs end up doing this thing to where maybe on higher difficulty modes, like the Tales franchise has it sort of like, hey, you can get more experience and more gold and more items and things like that from the higher modes. However, it is going to be more difficult, and people that are more experienced in those games are going to actually find maybe the moderate mode, which... For Tales of Zestiri, they ended up doing this interesting thing to where the kind of medium mode actually gave you more gold, but less experience. But since the game actually had gold, so that you can end up using it to kind of gain power in a lot of interesting ways, depending on how you kind of built your character, it ended up being easier on moderate because you would end up fighting enemies at higher levels, which would end up giving you more experience overall, rather than just the XP nerf. So it wasn't like you were gaining 10 and then all of a sudden you go on moderate and you're gaining 9. No, you're actually gaining 12. And so basically you are gaining more as long as you could defeat those enemies and since you were getting more gold you can end up upgrading your gear quicker which made it so that the game was actually easier for the most part on the moderate difficulty until you got to the later game bosses which was an interesting kind of take on it because if you were able to kind of play the game on those modes it was like hey we designed the game to be this way and so you can play it that way that said, on the easier mode, it did kind of remove some of the elements to the game gameplay wise. It was like, hey, you don't have to use this gear system, but the gear system in that game kind of sucked anyways. But what I'm getting at is that they can end up doing a lot more interesting things. And one thing that I am kind of worried about in this sort of modern day age where we end up seeing a lot of this sort of stuff. Am I going to have to go through this twice? No, I'm not. Okay. One thing that I am kind of worried about is that developers might not end up going that route. We end up seeing a lot of these cases to where games end up introducing these sort of assist modes almost arbitrarily, making them default and being like, oh, hey, by the way, we have this mode for accessibility. And that's what I am actually afraid of. And this is where I agree with people overall. Will this end up harming games in the future is one question that a lot of people have been kind of spouting for a long time. And it's been over a decade since this has been a question. And overall, 
I don't think it necessarily will because we always have the niche titles such as N++ is like, hey, this is a very difficult sort of Twitch platform and everything like that it is absolutely fantastic in a lot of ways. But at the same time, it's not a game for everyone. And this is the main point that I want to bring up here. Developers need to understand that not every game is going to be for everyone. Dark Souls is not a game for everyone. So people have been saying, oh, they should add an easy mode for people that want to experience it. And that's that's fine. You know, the story elements are cool and everything like that. But the game was designed for a very specific audience. And therefore, I feel like it should cater to that audience more. So if they went in and added an easy mode that made the game entirely arbitrary, while it wouldn't necessarily affect people who ended up playing it on normal, they would need to find different design ways to kind of make it so that there was some sort of incentive because one of the major arguments to it, and a lot of people have been kind of spouting at this in a negative way. I'll talk about that in a second. But one thing about games is the fact that you can min-max them. And so there will be an optimal way to end up playing the game. So if a developer ends up adding in an easy mode that ends up being the preferred way to play, let's say, for example, on Skyrim or something like that, they end up not really having any sort of penalty to playing on an easier mode, which was very, very annoying. Now, there was the whole skill progression system, which you level up as you do things more. And so some kind of min-maxers have been able to say, oh, well, you can end up playing on, actually, I think it was um, Adept, I think is the best mode to play on because then you can build up your skill levels. And then when you get to about halfway through the game, you end up switching over to a different gameplay mode. I don't remember what difficulty it was. Sorry, it's been a while since I looked that up. But regardless, they ended up kind of figuring out their whole maximum strategy and everything like that. And so it's not always going to be the case, but... In these games, you know, if it's actually easier to play on easy and there's no benefit to playing on a harder mode, why would anybody play that harder mode? You need to design in a way, and this is my main fear of it, is that games will just end up getting more and more easier and more and more of these elements will end up being sort of forced on. And that is one thing that I really, really fear for. A lot of mobile games, for example, end up kind of skimping out on a lot of their simple design elements because they introduce things like, let's say, automatic battles. I hate those games to where it's like, oh, well, it's automatically going to fight for you all the time. And I hate that. Now, there is one mobile game I play, Monster Super League. If you've watched the channel, you know what I'm talking about. Basically, that game has a lot of interesting elements to where you can do auto battles. In fact, it actually kind of almost requires you to because the game requires quite a bit of grind. It is a free to play title on the mobile phone. You can kind of expect where that monetization model is going. But regardless, it ends up making the system to where, sir, you can auto battle, but the auto battle sucks and it's intentionally bad because they want you to actually play manually when you get to the tougher dungeons. It actually adds an interesting element to the game to where you build different teams for your auto run and your manual runs. For example, there's a skill called sleep where a target gets put to sleep. However, if they are hit while they're sleeping, they'll end up waking up. Therefore, when you're in auto battle, your auto battle will end up kind of waking up any target and therefore the skill is almost completely useless unless you get it on a slow attacking kind of character, which I believe there's only like one or two that are actually viable to use in auto battles with a sleep mode. However, if you have 100% sleep on your character, which means it'll always put the enemy to sleep, that's extremely powerful when you are playing manually. And so when you are playing the whole classic turn-based battles and everything like that, you can end up using that into your strategy. And I feel like that's an interesting element because it actually adds in more gameplay by kind of removing gameplay, which is a little bit strange. Like I was talking about with the sort of Final Fantasy 13, this is kind of the other case to where it actually adds in an element to where you actually want to strategize instead of actually end up being skill-based or, you know, once again, in the case of Monster Super League, since it is a turn-based kind of team builder game, you are basically kind of strategizing your team already, but then there's different strategies that you want to use for your auto battle and etc. So yeah, it's, it's, it's interesting. But my main conclusion here is that, yes, I feel like easy modes can actually harm a game and I don't feel like every single game should have it. There's a lot of people that have been kind of saying, you know, kind of like being like, oh yeah, every game should have an easy mode. And I don't feel like it's the case. And one of these things I didn't really talk about too much is the fact that there's a lot of elements in these sort of games, such as like, let's say N++ again, to where the whole idea of the game is to slowly improve your skill set. And if you're not improving that skill set, then you're not actually really kind of playing the target of the game. And yes, it is an enjoyable platformer regardless, so you don't necessarily have to get better at it to enjoy it. But it is kind of one of the core design elements. And so you're supposed to be trying these challenges over and over again. They expect you to fail. And so it's like, all right, well, how can I go about this even better next time? And how can I improve for that? And I feel like that's an aspect that can be designed around. And I feel like that's an aspect that games should give. And so this is some one of the things that these easy modes and these set of assist modes could end up removing. If you have an assist that always makes it so you can perform combos with a single button, What's the point of learning the combos? And a lot of people never do. I'll use my sisters as an example again. 
in Mortal Kombat, if my sister... That's a terrible example. They don't like Mortal Kombat because it's bloody and gory. But regardless, let's say um, Soul Calibur. There we go. Soul Calibur. If they learned that they can just push the button and get through the entire single player story mode, they never learned combos. And then when they end up going into, you know, a battle with me, I'll just be like, ha ha, I can't win. Oh no, what am I going to do? And then I'll end up destroying them on the second round because I know a simple three hit combo that they don't. And it ends up getting around there kind of smashing the A button over and over again. And so it's one of those situations to where they never actually learned to play the game and they never actually improved. Now, were they having fun while they were just smashing the buttons? Yeah, sure. But here's the thing. They ended up getting bored because they were just sitting there mashing the button. And so it ends up running into a case to where the game ends up having a lot of a shorter lifespan and it ends up giving this sort of negative impression, which can actually harm the game industry in the long term. If people in the general public who don't play a lot of these games and don't play on the normal modes or play on the hard modes or yada yada, they might end up getting this soured impression of video games and that could end up harming the market in general. If games become too easy and they have too many assists to where they end up playing themselves, yes, some people will still enjoy them, but the burnout on them is a lot quicker. You can use any sort of mobile game as an example. There's a lot of mobile games that just sort of play themselves. You don't really have to do much besides press a few buttons. People don't stay on those for very long. With good reason, because there's nothing you're doing and there's nothing actually drawing you to play it more. Maybe there's cute animals, maybe it's a cat collection game and there's a cute little cat and you want to get it with this little tiny glasses or something like that. And sure, you know what, that's going to draw in some people and they're going to be like, hey, that's pretty cool. I like that. I like that. It's a cat and it has glasses. Yeah, yeah, that's cool. I've run the same bomb like three times. It's very aggravating. <laughs> Anyways. However, they're not going to stay with that game because there's no sort of advancement. There's nothing kind of drawing them in. But if you end up introducing these kind of complex mechanics and they can be like, oh, hey, I want to get better. I want to do what this person's doing. Then they can end up doing this. You know, one of the reasons why marketing ends up working so well, because they see like, oh, other people are going to be looking at this. So I want to look at it, too. And this kind of carries over to the game design as well. So my main fear is in the future. Yes, game Easy modes and assist modes could end up hurting a game and the creative vision, and it could end up hurting the gamer in general. Games could end up getting to the point to where they get oversimplified. And if they get too oversimplified, then gamers just won't have the games they have. Now, one kind of counterpoint to put into this is luckily we have the B teams and the indie teams of the scene. So, for example, the Dark Souls team that made Dark Souls the most difficult game ever, and then every publisher's like, hey, Dark Souls did really well. We did a really difficult game. And then they tried to make a difficult game and failed, but regardless, they end up trying to end and it's like, hey, people actually like difficult games. And hey, newsflash, yes, we do. But it is a sort of kind of subset of gamer, I would say. Not everyone likes difficult games. Sometimes I like to chill out and play a simple game every once in a while, but I personally like a good challenging game. And then we also have indie niche titles such as N++, where it's a Twitch platformer and it's actually really, really fantastic. We have JRPGs that are like, hey, we're going to keep these old classic elements because that's what people want and that's what we're going to target. And since we have those, I don't think we'll ever actually run into a future to where every single game is going to be oversimplified because if there's a game that people want, there's somebody willing to develop it because it's going to be something that they want as well. And so, you know, for example, they might make a complex JRPG. There's all like CRPGs that end up getting made through Kickstarter and things like that. It's like, hey, people want this. Let's go ahead and make it for them. And so they end up making it and ends up being, you know, what they were looking for. No, it's not for everyone. And I think this is something that, you know, AAA would probably need to realize eventually is that not every game needs to be for everyone. And I feel like they're getting along those routes. I feel like they're getting better and better at that. And yes, they are sort of failing in a lot of ends, but I do feel like there are some AAA games that are getting better. And as the gamer side of things, yes, an easy mode can harm the gamer, but I don't necessarily know if it's actually going to have any sort of long-term effects in the long run. Since we do actually have these games that are niche titles, they'll end up seeing these kind of cool games and be like, oh, hey, there's this really cool game I saw this guy play. I can't play it because I'm not very good at it, but I can still enjoy the aspect of that game existing. There's no reason for like censorship or anything like that, so it's not going to like remove it for other people, but it could end up ruining the sort of general perception of the gaming market because these B team and indie titles don't end up getting the marketing that these AAA games do. And therefore it couldn't end up hurting the image in the long run. And I hope that never happens because I would hate to see a case to where it's like, oh, well the general public leaves video games again. We did have a whole video game crash where games just sucked in general. And so nobody ended up looking at video games and it almost killed the industry. Although I don't think it ever would have died because interactive media was always a big thing. And it's always going to be a big thing because people like to interact with stuff. And so, yeah, but once again, that's kind of my thoughts on this and everything like that. Obviously, you can end up leaving your thoughts in the comments. This has been Michael with another design view. Today, we were answering the question of does an easy mode 
pose potential harm to the gamer and game industry and the game kind of creative visions that we have. I know the question was different at the beginning, but I don't actually pre-script these things, so I don't actually remember what I said. So regardless, thank you guys so much for watching. Make sure to like, comment, and subscribe for more content like this one. You can also end up checking out my other types of content as well. Make sure to leave your thoughts on the easy mode sort of thing. Obviously, easy mode, not a bad thing if the developer actually puts the time in to make it make sense. And I feel like there is, there does need to be some sort of benefit to playing on the harder modes or completing the harder levels. For example, in N++, you actually unlock secret levels and things like that as you kind of go along and you kind of get the self-achievement reward for being like, oh, I finally got past these levels and I got really, really far and yada yada. And that's the whole point of it and everything. And that's, that's the reward in this game. And not every game has to have like an arbitrary reward. Sometimes it can be something like, oh, well, you beat the level. Good job. Here's a five star rating or something like that. I don't know, like an achievement or something, you know, just something to accommodate that and be like, hey, you know, you got farther. That is something that people like. And, and plus you get this nice little kind of icon on your nice level level select. Like if I go back here, I can go to level select and it's like, hey, I've beaten these levels. That feels good because they are marked off. Obviously, I have a lot more. I haven't played this game all that much. I should play it more because I absolutely love it. But hey, there you go. Game in the background has been M++ as well. It is a fun little platformer. They just had this ultimate update, which added another few thousand levels, whatever. <laughs> it's ridiculous. The game has so many levels and I've had it since its launch, but like I haven't actually like played it a lot because I've just been playing other games and like, man, there is just so much content to go through here. So anyways, yeah. So that's my thoughts on easy mode and everything like that. Obviously, I'm not going to agree with all the elitists being like, oh, well, games shouldn't be easier for the people that just can't play them. No, I think that's dumb. I think pe people should be able to experience a game however they want to. And I'm a strong believer in things like cheats for single player games. Obviously, multiplayer games don't cheat. That's stupid. If it's a single player game, maybe it's a local multiplayer game. If you're doing something like, let's say you have one person or two people that have one hit kills on, uh, what was it? Was it? No, it was Mortal Kombat, wasn't it? I can't remember exactly what it was. There was some PlayStation game we had to where it was a one-hit kill. It wasn't... It was not Mortal Kombat, but I can't remember. It was like a one-hit kill mode, and basically it was a cheat code. And so one hit, it was really, really fun to play. And so basically there was this guy... I think it was Primal Rage? I think? I can't remember. Man, that is... That is I'd have to go over to my freaking PlayStation 1 shelf over there and actually see what it was. But yeah, it's just... Yeah, I think that gamers should be able to experience games how they want to, so I don't want to make this seem like I'm an elitist or anything like that, and it's being like, oh, hey, you know, nobody should be able to experience difficult games. I don't think that's actually the case at all, but I do feel like it does need to have some sort of challenge to it to have a sort of merit and show people why people actually enjoy these games and to make sure that they don't end up sort of just removing elements that they wanted designed into the game. Like, let's say there was a design element where they needed keys or something like that, and then on the easy mode, they're just like, eh, we're going to remove the keys. But then the keys actually gave you like story elements and stuff like that and then it's like hey you know these people that are playing on easy mode don't even know also one thing i want to mention here make sure not to default these freaking assists i remember playing freaking some games and every once in a while it's like hey by the way you can't do this and i'm like why why can't i do this it's like auto run i remember um asphalt 8 or whatever has this like auto kind of running mode it's one of those ones with the driving assist and everything like that um they're mobile now exclusively but regardless they have like these auto run modes where it's like it will automatically accelerate and when i first started up the game it defaulted that that was super frustrating i'm like oh i can't actually like drive in this game it wasn't until i looked at the options and saw the assist mode and it was automatically on so make sure they're defaulted off because if it is somebody casual and they're just gonna be like oh hey the game works this way so it's a bad idea to have those defaulted as well anyways i'm gonna stop rambling thank you guys so much for watching and i will see you guys in the next video and if you have any design questions, make sure to leave them in the comments. Or if you want a game analyzed or anything like that, or maybe a mechanic analyzed. I think my next one is going to be either about frame rate. I'm fine. I've got it written. I just haven't recorded it yet because it requires a lot of footage. Or it's going to be about Final Fantasy 13 and why I actually like that game and a lot of people don't. So yeah, make sure to subscribe for those. See you guys later.